Guild Wars 2 has had a tough time over the years and has fallen out of the gaze of the MMO community, but the time has finally come for the end of the era of irrelevancy. The end of dragons is coming. Allow me to invite you into my hopium den and tell you why I'm excited for Guild Wars 2, End of Dragons, and beyond. Incidentally, the footage you're seeing here is from a recent playtest I was very privileged to be a part of, but more on that later. In my opinion, the main problem Guild Wars 2 has always had is managing its many game modes at the same time, and an uncompromising dedication to reinventing the wheel while having each game mode and content type completely separate from the other. Essentially, ArenaNet tried to separately develop content tailored to every single type of player at the same time without reusing stuff or making it work for multiple audiences. As you can imagine, this didn't go very well and led to the erosion of the endgame modes in particular. However, ArenaNet are looking to address this core issue with End of Dragons and what comes next. We've already seen action taken to move towards solutions. This isn't just speculation. The long neglected world versus world, large scale open world player versus player game mode is in the process of being reworked into an entirely new, heavily guild focused structure known as alliances, which will bring superior matchmaking, competitive structures, rewards, and finally guild wars in Guild Wars 2, so people can't smoke ugly complain about that anymore. World vs. World in particular is something that really sets Guild Wars 2 apart from its competition, and that's one of the reasons that World vs. World survived, despite not getting a lot of development attention. At its core, it's a very compelling, social, and infinitely replayable game mode, perfect for an MMO. And it's clear that players are interested in large-scale player vs. player, because although New World didn't really work out that well, it had a huge amount of interest for its territory control and large-scale player vs. player elements. Even now, Guild Wars 2 stands out as one of the very few games to pull this type of content off successfully, and is more than capable of scratching that imperial itch in the MMO scene. A running theme that you'll soon pick up in this video is a lot of very significant changes in development strategy, and it's worth contextualizing this before we go further. There is a new leadership team at ArenaNet, and they've made it very clear that they view World vs. World as a quote, cornerstone game mode that they want to make best in industry, and acknowledge that historically, World vs. World hasn't been given the focus it deserves. And this leadership change is a big part of why I view what ArenaNet is saying as credible, and as you'll soon see, there have been changes and confirmed future developments that demonstrate that it's not just hot air. ArenaNet mean business. One of the most important things happening is a dedicated team being formed to balance the endgame modes, which has been a huge thorn in the side of every game mode, but particularly World vs. World and Player vs. Player, featuring metas lasting for up to a year. We've actually already seen a lot of progress when it comes to balance, and although the changes are imperfect and controversial sometimes, the game is in a significantly better spot than it was years ago in almost every game mode balance-wise, and that's only going to get better with this dedicated approach. On top of that, we already know that there will be major balance changes on the launch of the expansion to be followed up with a major patch relatively soon after the expansion in the summer. This is a big step up from the aforementioned stagnation. Moving quickly on because we've got a lot to get through, ArenaNet are also attacking common complaints about the game that have existed for years, if not since launch. Performance has always been a hot topic in Guild Wars 2, and the game has historically been plagued with frame rate issues, but that's already improving, and significantly too, as the game is being upgraded to DirectX 11, which is not something I even ever expected to happen, and demonstrates that the developers are committing to the long-term future of the game. Why else would they significantly change the end? Engine, with potentially more upgrades down the line to both performance and visual fidelity. Do note that DirectX 11 is still in beta as of now, but eventually the game will switch over to it completely. Difficulty in the endgame has also been a bit of a disaster for a long time. Guild Wars 2 is surprisingly complicated and fast-paced for what's considered to be a very casual game, and because of these mechanics, has a very high skill floor and steep learning curve compared to traditional MMOs, because of how action-oriented, movement-based, and reactive the game is, and also the lack of holy trinity in streamlined builds and gear systems. This has led to a very problematic situation where all endgame has to be tuned very, very very easy, because otherwise normal players won't be able to even get close to completing it, because the initial steps to understanding how to use the combat system are quite a big ask. 
This in turn means that even the hardest content in the game is somewhat trivial for players who do have solid mechanical skill and completely impossible for those who don't, leading to an extremely divided and frustrated community on both sides of that equation with nobody being satisfied. ArenaNet have been strictly against difficulty settings for a long time, but that has come to an end. The game will be shifting to a new type of content called Strike Missions. These are bosses reused from the story made into repeatable endgame boss encounters, much like Trials from Final Fantasy XIV, that will indeed have difficulty options, promised to challenge players with uncheesable mechanics and strict knowledge checks. Because of the accessible nature of story level content, this will provide ArenaNet an option to deliver consistent hardcore content without impacting the development of story or open world, while making sure that everyone can enjoy it, which seems to me to be a far superior development strategy than what we've historically seen. It even allows for further expansion, as there is no reason that ArenaNet could not add another difficulty option on top of challenge mode, which I think may be necessary actually, as I don't think three modes, story, normal, and challenge, will be granular enough to really push top end players to the limit. Limits. Think Mythic in World of Warcraft or Ultimates in Final Fantasy. Regardless of that minor qualm, this new approach is revolutionary for Guild Wars 2. Yes, I know it's very mainstream in other games, but hey, better late than never. And for the first time, a Guild Wars 2 expansion is launching with repeatable endgame. Four strike missions with the challenge modes to be released shortly afterwards. I'm really excited for the future of strike missions in Guild Wars 2. What can I say? Not having to wait years between raid releases sounds incredible. As strikes will presumably be integrated to the regular story content that Guild Wars 2 releases frequently called The Living World. I also happen to have predicted strikes would end up being the savior of endgame player versus environment years ago during their inception, so this direction also has the bonus of allowing me to be smug about being correct. There is another side to the problem of endgame that you'll very commonly hear about though, and that's players not learning key game mechanics very well. And that's also something ArenaNet is looking to address. The new player experience in Guild Wars 2 has always been a bit of a sore spot because it can be very overwhelming, and by its very nature, fixing it requires some pretty serious reworking to core systems or old content, which is obviously difficult and expensive to do. And while we don't know for sure that ArenaNet intend to go back and fix everything, I wouldn't be surprised to see at least a few changes to the very early core game. They've tried to do this before with tutorial achievements, updating starter gear, and some basic mechanic tutorials, but also because of some subtle details shown about End of Dragons and now confirmed in a recent End of Dragons playtest I was a part of. During a live-streamed tour of the first map in End of Dragons, Xingjie Island, ArenaNet expressed that the zone actually has a lot of tutorialization built into it, expressing key mechanics such as dodging, crowd control, and so on, to introduce players to these concepts that will be essential to understanding the combat system. And more recently in the playtest, the developers showed off a boss in the Echovald Wilds to me and a few others that had attacks very similar to what you might see in instance content, albeit not as punishing, of course. I then asked them if this was a common part of the design philosophy for the open world in End of Dragons, and they confirmed that it was, and that the open world in End of Dragons will have encounters that require players to solve mechanics and coordinate with each other to succeed. The open world serving as an extended tutorial is huge. For a very long time, the game has suffered from a massive gap in skill requirement from open world to anything instanced or player versus player oriented, with little connection between the modes, as open world PvE has been extremely face roll, leading to a very harsh learning curve when trying to get into the endgame. The new approach ArenaNet seems to be taking here should help in allowing players to get the hang of the game in a comfortable environment and then give them the tools they need to conquer their enemies in more mechanically demanding content. Open world is by far the most played content in the game, and one of the defining features that Guild Wars 2 has. So many MMOs these days are massively instanced rather than massively multiplayer, and just like World vs. World, this is where Guild Wars 2 delivers on that huge scale experience, and developing it into a more engaging world rather than a complete farm fest is a step towards capturing open world's true potential. I think a really good example of this is the fact that there have been huge communities just dedicated to defeating the hard 
harder world bosses and helping other players do the same. More recently, I organized some map speedruns and boss kills and it was a truly remarkable community experience. Despite the fact that the content wasn't super challenging on a mechanical level, we had a lot of newer and tryhard players involved at the same time and they all universally said it was an awesome experience to solve the maps and push them to the limits. This is because something doesn't have to be insanely difficult to be engaging and fun. It just has to have enough depth that your actions actually matter. So moving the new open world in that direction offers a huge potential for communities to form and for players of all skill levels to learn the game together and get excited to challenge themselves to achieve goals. Another minor but fun feature that's been really overlooked in Ender Dragons is that different tiers of monsters, veterans, elites, and champions, which are more or less mini-bosses, will also be handled a little differently than previously, and they'll have different skill sets compared to their normal versions, further making the open world content more varied and engaging to the players while maintaining familiarity with the lower tier opponents, allowing for a difficulty ramp of sorts. All of that is of course compounded with easier versions of strike mission bosses being integrated into the story, which will introduce key concepts such as dodging attacks, crowd control, standing in green circles, not standing in red circles, and so on, that will be built upon in harder difficulty settings. These more standardized visual cues are much more common in the game than they used to be, and should ensure players will be familiar with how fights work when fighting new opponents or increasing the difficulty. I think this will make End of Dragons a much better experience for newer players, while also giving learning players the confidence to try new things. Endgame being a little closer to open world and story should also do a better job of showing players how the game works and what the game has to offer compared to right now where the game just kind of throws you in the deep end at max level and says, hey, you go and figure out what you're supposed to do. Telling players what the game has on the menu is something that I still think Guild Wars 2 desperately needs more of, but I think ArenaNet is aware of this and will very likely take further steps to improve this, as a very common complaint I get all the time is players getting very confused about what exactly they're supposed to be doing. The reason for this new player focus and system fixing focus is not just because of the expansion though, I think, which will certainly draw new players to the game, but it's also because ArenaNet planned to release the game on Steam at some point in the future. We don't have many details on that as of right now, but I imagine that could be a huge deal for the game. Bringing in masses of players and making sure they stick is surely on ArenaNet's mind. I think this explains why ArenaNet also have been poking around at the idea of bringing back some older content that doesn't exist in the game anymore, namely Living World Season 1. Back in the day, Guild Wars 2 had this crazy content cycle, where new content will be added every two weeks, and then older content will be removed, because because the world itself would change and move on, hence the name Living World. This changed very quickly because it was unsustainable, but not before a decent chunk of very important story was simply vanished into thin air, never to see the light of day again. This naturally leaves a pretty weird hole in the story for new players because it actually introduced very important characters that are still key in the story today, who you will have no idea about as a new player. The only explanation you'll get is a quick cutscene recapping the first season. This is definitely a very jarring experience for players who are new to the game, and it seems ArenaNet intend to fix it. A few old story instances have been re-added to the game, including a very famous world boss, the Twisted Marionette. They have an aged super well, but it's probably better than nothing, and will hopefully lead to a more cohesive story experience for new players. Whether the entirety of Season 1 will return in some form is subject to speculation, and ArenaNet haven't commented on that, but they are at the very least toying with the idea idea from what we've seen so far. Steam to me is the final piece in the puzzle that gives us insight into the studio's decision making and what makes the future of the game so exciting right now. World vs. World Alliances, DirectX 11, regular class balancing, strike missions, an engaging open world, taking steps to help new players into the game, all of these things seem to be looking to come together in 2022 and will be the perfect catalyst for the game to really get into its stride again. Which is probably a good thing to have going before you launch onto the world's largest distributor of PC games. And yeah, I haven't even mentioned the actual expansion features yet. Nine brand new elite specializations or subclasses to play, introducing new builds and roles to professions, siege turtles, skiffs, a customizable jade bot companion to enhance your quality of life, and even fishing. 
There is a reason I didn't mention these things earlier, though, and it's because I don't think the expansion not being good is a major concern. All of the uncertainty and doubts are about what happens next. We've never really had a consistent idea of what the hell is going to happen with regards to endgame player versus environment, player versus player, or world versus world after an expansion. And when we have, it hasn't always lasted that long. End of Dragons being fun, in my opinion, has never been in question. Everyone knows the expansion itself will be fun, and the content will be good. ArenaNet is known for delivering quality content and features that lead the industry in some cases. The best example of this would be, of course, mounts. But that isn't enough. What makes a massively multiplayer online game truly great and gives it the capacity for growth is what happens after and between expansions and how the game as a whole is planned and managed, which is exactly what Guild Wars 2 has struggled with since the beginning, and it's exactly what we see being targeted in recent developments and in End of Dragons. As a final positive note, the communication from the studio has undergone a pretty big transformation over the past year or so, with significantly more transparency and road mapping across the entire game, which has certainly improved developer community relations, and I very much expect that to continue in a similar vein. ArenaNet have also decided that their game is so good they actually want loads of players in it, and are approaching marketing in a more modern way by reaching out and sponsoring larger content creators, which frankly don't really exist with within the Guild Wars 2 scene, because we're all irrelevant. I'm joking a bit here about ArenaNet not marketing, which of course they do, but it's certainly a large criticism players have of the studio, and it's not uncommon for players outside the game to assume the game is a bit dead, or has no endgame and other misconceptions. So much so that I had to make a video about that. And this sort of stuff definitely hurts the game. If a lot of people think your game is dead or has no content, then it can be damaging even if there is no truth to that statement. All memes aside, it's great to see ArenaNet embracing Twitch and YouTube a little bit more. Games like Among Us, Apex Legends, and New World have demonstrated just how effective it can be to be Game of the Month when trying to draw players to at least try your game and be aware that it exists and what it has to offer. I also have to give additional credit to ArenaNet. They've been making some great content of their own too, with an excellent cinematic gameplay features trailer and some really charming live streams that feature the developers getting very excited about what they're doing, which makes it very clear that they love the game and care about it very much, while humanizing the studio and the developers, making the community feel connected and in the loop, which is a huge deal. There was definitely a period of time where ArenaNet was being accused of not caring about the game. And while it was obviously not true, the resentment building up in the community was was absolute poison to the game's reputation and perception in the wider MMO community, and the improved communication and community management has drastically improved community sentiment. The game hasn't had any fresh content for a while, because ArenaNet pretty much dropped what they were doing, rushed out an ending to the story, which wasn't well received to say the very least, and then went full steam on the expansion until now. And somehow, the overall feeling in the community is significantly more positive than when we actually had new content. The magic of communication in action. I've even been lucky enough to have direct, candid conversations on stream with lead developers, which is pretty wild considering the historical radio silence approach of ArenaNet, and is pretty uncommon in the industry overall, especially considering the scale of the studio. In conclusion, End of Dragons will be a great expansion, but the greatest adventure is still ahead, and it's looking very, very good indeed. Thanks for watching. Make sure to stalk me on social media, hop on board my stream to talk about all things Guild Wars 2, and join the Hardstuck Discord, which is my appropriately named guild that is all about making Guild Wars 2 even more exciting than it already is, with community events, competition, and enough experienced players to answer any question you could conceivably have. I'll see you next time.